friends, if you're gonna linger on a sidewalk, you better have your head on a swivel. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. Today we actually have three lessons, one from Houston, Texas, one from Buenos Aires, Argentina, and one from Los Angeles, California. Firearms Legal Protection just started a 100% free monthly newsletter to bring quality, accurate information about legal self-defense to good, sane, sober, moral, prudent people like you. Go sign up for free, no hassle help for your self-defense at the link in the description and thank them for sponsoring today's lesson. Here's our victim in the first one. You can just see him kind of waiting for a ride or something on his phone, messing around. These guys just roll up. Guy gets out with a gun in his hand. You can see it there in his right hand. We got a gunman and a grab man. They're gonna grab his phone out of his hand, grab his other stuff out of his hand. They're gonna start rifling through his pockets and, and grabbing all his stuff. Okay, man, you want my wallet? Here you go, whatever. And they're like, yo, man, I want your backpack too. Give it up and you know, give me all the stuff. You got anything else that I want, whatever. The guy's like, okay, man. Here's my backpack, whatever. They're gonna take off to the car. He runs off the other way. That's where that one ends. Now here's our second victim, hanging out outside, waiting for a ride, watching his phone, messing around on that. These guys are gonna jump out in a very similar manner. Now again, this is halfway across the world, but same thing, people are people, right? Two grab man, gun man here, they're gonna grab his phone, they didn't grab his other stuff, and they run off. He's gonna not run away. Instead, he's gonna watch where they go and just walk across the street. Third one, they had followed this guy from the store. He had been shopping in this district and he apparently had a nice Rolex on. And this is a known motif in this neighborhood. They then follow him to a remote area. They tackle him, they beat him up. They're gonna take his Rolex off his wrist, which obviously he doesn't wanna have happen here. And they're gonna also grab his jewelry off of his neck. And uh, it's apparently having a harder time coming off than what they wanted. So they're gonna come off for that, grab his stuff and run off. And we get to think about lessons from these from all over the world. Man, that was a lot. And we got a couple of lessons to think about today. If you want to support the work that we do, would you consider becoming a, a patron member of Active Self Protection? We do it through our website. There's a link in the description. Gold patron members get all kinds of benefits like getting to come to our monthly online deep dive seminars and other stuff like that. Thank you to everyone who supports the work that we do. First things first, if you are going to be on a sidewalk here in a public street, recognize that you're in a transitional space. That doesn't mean that you, that, that you have to be paranoid, but it does mean that you need to pay attention to your world. So if you are hanging out and waiting for somebody in a transitional space, I can't tell you enough, put your phone away. That is probably the number one thing. Attention buys you time, time buys you options. So if you're on your phone, that, that attention vacuum will take that away from you. So put your phone in your pocket if you have to wait there. I get it, so hard for us to do, but in that transitional space, incredibly wise to do. Now then, dude's gonna jump out and you're gonna see he's got gun in hand right here and you can see already he's threatening with a gun. At this point, there's probably nothing that this guy's gonna do. Even if he is a firearms carrier or whatever, we don't draw from the drop. So chances are good. His best bet in this particular case, because he's allowed himself to get in this situation, is to just comply. So a lot of people can't win a fight because they don't know they're in one until they're in the middle of it or they don't see it coming so they can't prepare themselves. If he had been paying attention, they jump out of the car, he'd known, ah, that guy, that's starting to worry me as soon as he sees the car doors open up, he might have been able to do something. But in this particular case, I don't think he could because specifically of how they attacked him. I do also think he does something very good here and that is he gets out of the danger zone. The second he finds himself an escape from these guys, he does so. Notice he runs left off screen while they run right to their car. Get out of the danger zone because you don't wanna hang around in case they decide, hey, I wonder if he's got anything else or they wanna do violence to you to keep you from messing with them. Now, same thing here, he's, he's on his phone, all those kinds of things, not a whole lot he is gonna do in this particular case because he doesn't have any opportunity to do so. Now that said, I think in this case, this looks like a, a home environment. This looks like an apartment complex or something like that. My answer here is prevention, if at all possible, rather than I'm gonna sit here at the sidewalk and wait for you, I'm gonna sit somewhere that is secure and wait for you, text me when you're 30 seconds out or use your you know, uh, notify me or something like that, just so then that way I can walk out the minute that that comes out and I'm not sitting there as a sitting duck in a transitional space with valuables. That is probably the biggest thing because he just doesn't really have any opportunity here to do anything else. They are too fast. They, you know, they have this down to a science and these things are happening again. We saw that happen all over the world, right? So, so this is in the US, this one wasn't in the US. This next one, on the other hand, is about pre-planning. So dude has been doing his grocery shopping and they've been following him and they notice that he's wearing a Rolex and a very nice chain. 
Now, it's not a crime to wear a Rolex. It's not a crime to have a nice chain. It's not a, a crime to go, oh, hey, you know, I have nice things, I spend my money, but recognize when you're wearing that stuff, you're advertising. Not only are you advertising for everybody, again, we joke that a Rolex doesn't say, I, you know, it doesn't tell you the time, it tells you you're rich, but it tells other people you're rich as well, and it might make them want to steal it. So you better have the skills to handle that kind of problem. And of course, these two-on-ones here, that's going to be very difficult. So now you're in a big two-on-one fight. I don't know, you know, uh, that, that he had any choice here either. Dude in the yellow sweater there's got a gun he just put away. So again, your best bet in this case, take the L and give him the Rolex and try to get the license plate on the car and live to fight another day. I think the answer here to all three of these is prevention. In this last one, it's not necessarily that you have to not carry a Rolex. It's just that if you do, you recognize these kinds of things do happen and these kinds of things are, are going to happen particularly in some neighborhoods in the US. So you gotta have the attitude, the skills and the plan to protect yourself if it does.